Kia ora, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor as well as education advisor, coming live once again from the beautiful city of Hamilton, New Zealand. Uh, yeah, great start to another week. Uh, back, We are back on Monday, and uh, I guess a lot of you must be having your Monday blues. Uh, I certainly am. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's good to, good to start another week and uh, have, uh, you know, a good start to the week. I uh, uh, hope all of you had a good uh, uh, weekend and uh, you did some interesting things. Uh, mine was pretty good. Uh, I, I actually invited some of the uh, members of the Indian cricket team who were here in Hamilton, uh, New Zealand, because they were playing a three-day uh, practice match uh, here in uh, Hamilton, and uh, they were quite chilled out. And you know, I have a contact with uh, uh, one of the senior members of the cricket team. Uh, his name is Sridhar, and Sridhar uh, is. Uh, <clears throat> somebody from my hometown back in India. We are both from Hyderabad. So Sridhar is currently the fielding coach of uh, the Indian cricket team. <coughs> Not a good start. I've started coughing already. Ah, some water should settle it down. <clears throat> so yeah, I got in touch with uh, <coughs> Sridhar, who is a uh, the fielding coach of the Indian cricket team, and uh, he was uh, generous and kind enough to come uh, to my home along with uh, Girish, uh, who is the manager of the team while they're on this tour of New Zealand. And Girish is also from Hyderabad. So, you know, we had a fantastic catch up and uh, it was awesome to talk about the good old days, good old days in Hyderabad. Uh, you know, before it was uh, this big bustling city that it has become now. So, and uh, considering we were all around the same age group, it was fantastic to sort of uh, rewind a bit of history and uh, look back upon uh, our good old growing up days in Hajbad. And uh, so, along with Sridhar and uh, uh, Girish, there was also Vikram Rathod, uh, who is uh, the batting coach for India. So Vikram came as well. Uh, he uh, was he's a, also an ex uh, Test player for India, and he played some one day matches for India as well. I think in the early 2000s. So Vikram is now the uh, batting coach for India. So he came along as well, and uh, we also had uh, <coughs> Vihari, uh, who is one of the current uh, players for India. So Vihari was here, and he is going to be playing in the. Uh, next test match. Uh, and then I had some of my friends uh, locally who came along uh, from Auckland. Uh, and uh, and yeah, my good friend uh, and member of parliament uh, from Hamilton, Jamie Strange. Uh, he was here in uh, at uh, <clears throat> my home as well on Saturday. It was a fantastic evening, you know, of uh, uh, great conversations about cricket. And there was Kaushik, uh, uh, R. Kaushik, who is a very famous cricket writer and journalist uh, and uh, if you just go to google and put uh, our kaushik cricket and you can see that he has got written a lot of stuff about cricket and uh, he's considered one of the most uh, <clears throat> knowledgeable people about indian cricket so kaushik he is the man who also wrote the uh, autobiography of uh, vvs lakshman uh, for him vvs lakshman as you know is a very famous uh, Indian cricketer, so Kaushik was there. So we had some great conversations. So fantastic uh, <clears throat> evening with uh, good food, nice drinks, and uh, yeah, and some amazing cricket conversations. And they came and spent about four hours in my home, and we had a great time, all of us together. And then uh, we, of course, I went and dropped them back uh, to the hotel. And uh, so the last three, four days has been exciting for us here in Hamilton because. Uh, <clears throat> The Indian cricket team was uh, uh, in town and uh, they were playing uh, this uh, practice match, uh, which was not very competitive. So, you know, they uh, were all a very, uh, they were quite relaxed and chilled out. And uh, so the uh, AJV office is right next to the hotel where the Indian team was playing, uh, sorry, staying. And uh, 
the my team in uh, Hamilton uh, were very excited to keep seeing the Indian cricketers going in and out of the hotel and uh, because New, Ze uh, New Zealand is such a chilled out country and uh, especially Hamilton is uh, such a chilled out place that uh, a lot of uh, these uh, cricketers uh, who are normally mobbed back in India or other places, uh, they were just chilling, you know, they were walking around the streets and uh, they took what where they've recently introduced something in uh, uh, New Zealand called lime scooters, which are like, you know, these little <clears throat> powered scooters where you can kind of go from point A to point B. Uh, instead of walking, you can take one of those lime scooters, which will uh, travel on the footpaths and, you know, you can take them around. So it was interesting to see a lot of the Indian cricketers having fun and uh, uh, taking the lime scooters and just getting around and just being, you know, normal uh, young people. I, so I spotted Virat and his wife, uh, uh, Anushka, as well. They were also on the lime scooters. And uh, and so where our office is located in Hamilton is uh, is a very strategic location because we're right on the uh, most uh, important street in Hamilton. And so a lot of these guys would walk in and out of their hotel and, you know, they have to cross our office before they went off to get their drinks or, you know, whatever else. Uh, yeah, it was very cool. So, yeah, very good. So that 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 was my weekend. I hope uh, all of you had a lovely weekend. Uh, I can, uh, <clears throat> as always, as every week, I will, you know, obviously give a little bit of banter about my weekend before we get into the serious business of answering your questions and answers about New Zealand uh, uh, education and migration. But I'll, I'll start off like every week, uh, <clears throat> showing my license. Uh, let me get it out. There you go. Yep, there's my license. It says uh, due for renewal uh, shortly. Uh, I need to renew it before the 21st of March of uh, this year. So it's an annual process where uh, a licensed immigration advisor like myself and uh, the rest of my colleagues on the team uh, like uh, Mary and uh, Tulika and Navya uh, and Shereen, uh, we are the five licensed advisors in the company at the moment. So <clears throat> we need to keep uh, uh, renewing our license year on year to keep it active so that we can come online uh, week after week and uh, give all you wonderful boys and girls and uh, men and women some fantastic advice about uh, moving to New Zealand and making this uh, beautiful country your new home. So that's who we are and i can see my beautiful people uh from team hv a lot of them have joined in again uh for this live session they support all of us wherever we're going in the <clears throat> going live so but the entire team is kind of supporting us uh, in the back end uh, on skype uh, and today is the birthday of one of our colleagues called vijay lakshmi who is uh, one of the visa officers in team ajb so yep happy birthday vijaya and wish you many many more and uh, thank you for being part of team ajb and i uh, hope you will uh, be one of those people who will uh, go on to become part of uh, history because you know as a team we want to create this history not uh, just for uh, New Zealand, but hopefully we will go very global uh, shortly in a few years time from now. So yeah, that's us and uh, some questions uh, have started coming in. So which means I can stop this big long banter and uh, get on with the actual task of answering these questions. Uh, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Question one, so I'm uh, coming live uh, guys and girls on uh, Facebook. Uh, uh, I'm coming live on the uh, AJV Global Facebook page, uh, but I think my team would have already shared it now to uh, the uh, AJV Global uh, group as well. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> hopefully it's also shared to my personal uh, uh, ID as well, and so you. So I'm coming live on Facebook, uh, on uh, uh, AJV Global page, and I'm also coming live on YouTube uh, and on two different channels. Uh, I'm coming live on my channel called Arun Jacob, uh, which is uh, 
my personal channel on YouTube. And then I also am coming live on uh, the AJV Global channel, uh, which is the official channel for, um, you know, uh, our company. And so initially this whole, all those, and then of course I'm coming live on uh, to all you beautiful people on uh, Instagram, whoever is watching. So I have this combination of my laptop through where, you know, which I use for um, coming live on Facebook and YouTube. And then I come live on Instagram using my phone. And so big hello to all the followers on Instagram. I can see there are some followers on Instagram as well. So yeah, we are trying very hard to create our uh, digital footprint uh, across various platforms and uh, trying to, yeah, you know, uh, reach out to as many of you wonderful people as we can. So anyhow, so that's the background to today's session. So <clears throat> ask your questions. If you are uh, an AGV student or client, please mention that because then I can become all selfish and give you some fantastic answers. And uh, if you're not an AGV client, uh, please share your number because uh, we would like to uh, be in touch with you and provide you with all the information that you might need uh, about uh, studying uh, in New Zealand or migrating to New Zealand. And we would love to uh, get in touch with you and have a chat with you. And for that, of course, we will require your number. So the rules are simple. You know, you want my free advice. I will need your telephone number. So I think it's a reasonably straightforward deal It is really. Okay, so moving on, our first question is from Atif Iftikhar, and Atif says, uh, good evening, sir, hope you're doing great. I'm visiting Auckland next week, and I visit your Hamilton office regarding my skilled migration. Hey, Atif, absolutely. Uh, warm welcome to come and see us in Hamilton, uh, and uh, we are planning to set up an office in Auckland as well uh, shortly. So in anticipation of that, we've already recruited one uh, a senior person, a senior manager to come and join us. Uh, <clears throat> and she is currently undergoing training uh, at the Hamilton office. Uh, and her name is Rina Thomas. Uh, so once uh, Rina completes her training uh, in the Hamilton office, then uh, we uh, hope she will uh, also get the license like myself and uh, uh, Mary here in New Zealand. And uh, she will then be, uh, you know, uh, taking care of our Auckland office. Uh, so we intend to set up offices all across New Zealand, especially the larger cities. So, yeah, but in the meantime, because uh, Hamilton is the only uh, office we have at the moment, Atif, please uh, come and see us. Warm welcome. Uh, so there will be Mary, there will be Virginia, there will be Rena and Anjana and Nicholas. So we are all uh, working out of the um, Hamilton office. I'm there sometimes. I'm, uh, I mostly work from home because... Uh, I tend to work more with the Indian team. So my work actually starts in the evening. So by the time the Hamilton office kind of finishes its work and gets back home. But yeah, you know, we're more than welcome for you. Uh, please uh, come and see us at the Hamilton office. And Mary will be there and we'll be delighted to uh, help you with your uh, New Zealand uh, uh, migration queries. All right. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, so here's a question from A.K. Kumar Love from YouTube, and he's shared his number. So, and he says, Sir, I want information about New Zealand farming job. Okay, this is an interesting question because uh, there is this uh, slight myth uh, uh, that goes around, uh, I think, where it is sort of uh, propagated that uh, New Zealand. Uh, uh, will hire people who can come and work in our farms. Uh, yes, we are a very strong agrarian country. We have a very strong uh, agriculture background and we uh, do have constant uh, shortages uh, in our agriculture and horticulture, uh, in our vineyards, in our farms, in our orchards and uh, various other places. So it is something that, yes, we require. And that is the reason uh, specifically the government has come out, the immigration department has come out with a, a particular form of visa called uh, regional uh, shortage uh, of, you know, uh, skills, uh, especially for the uh, horticulture and the agricultural sector. But by and large, uh, this is applicable for people uh, who are already present in New Zealand and uh, the government has also introduced something called the working holiday visa, where 
uh, people from certain countries uh, and uh, below a particular age and uh, subject to meeting some other criteria can actually come into New Zealand and uh, uh, be able to work here and also have a holiday at the same time. So a lot of these uh, young people from uh, Europe and uh, from uh, uh, South America and a few other places, they come into New Zealand and uh, <clears throat> they come and take up these uh, farming jobs or horticulture jobs. Uh, for people from other countries, so I'm just thinking, uh, Kumar, from your name, that you might be from India or from the South Asian uh, part of the world. So uh, there are only certain countries where uh, the uh, working holiday visa is permitted by the government of New Zealand. Uh, for others, if you're keen to work in uh, the farming industry here in New Zealand, then my suggestion would be that you need to be present in New Zealand and you need to have a uh, valid uh, work right uh, and one of the best ways and simplest ways to do that is to come to new zealand as an international student because while you're studying you can get um, uh, the uh, part-time work rights uh, and during vacation you can get full-time work rights and once you complete your course uh, of course depending on what level of course you study and which city you study in uh, you might get one, two, or three years of post-study work visa. So yeah, th that's uh, a possibility. But you know, try to find a farming job directly in New Zealand while you're still outside the country is a very difficult uh, task. Unless and until you are a very highly qualified agricultural or horticultural scientist, and then you reach out and you find a particular uh, employment or opening in. Uh, uh, place in New Zealand that might be a possibility but otherwise you know by and large it's very difficult and which is where we advise that you will need to be present in New Zealand uh, and which is why we strongly advocate the student pathway all right so Kumar thanks for sharing your number wait for a call from our team and uh, have a chat there's a, it's a no obligations chat uh, we have no <clears throat> we don't expect you to come to New Zealand just because you spoke to us uh, so but do collect the information, you know, you need to gather a lot of information because going overseas is a life changing experience. And that moment is so important that uh, you need to have all the information possible before you can make uh, uh, a conscious decision whether you want to do it or not, because it does involve a lot of uh, money, time and effort. So, yeah, you know, so have a chat with uh, our wonderful AJV team. Uh, we have some. Uh, superb people on our team just go to ajvglobal.com which is our website and uh, if you click on the tab which says team you will look at uh, all the team members of ajv and you can go through the backgrounds of each person and you will see that we are uh, an absolute super solid uh, uh, rock star team as far as new zealand uh, education and migration is concerned so okay yeah explain you know, requesting all of you to go to our website and have a look at uh, our team members as well okay cool <clears throat> Next question is from Sunil Kumar. Sunil says hi, and he says I'm an AJV client. Uh, hey Sunil, uh, thank you for choosing to work with AJV. Much appreciated. Uh, it is always a pleasure to you know have say hello to one of our. <clears throat> so Sunil asks his question is: If we do two years masters, do we get PR? Easy. Good question, Sunil, because. Uh, uh, the way the uh, residency now uh, rules uh, work for uh, New Zealand is that uh, there are two particular uh, <clears throat> conditions that uh, you need to fulfill, one or the other, uh, not both uh, at the same time. But uh, So condition one is that you need to have a job offer in New Zealand or you should already be employed uh, in New Zealand. Or uh, second condition is that you should have studied in New Zealand for a minimum period of two years uh, and uh, got yourself a master's or a PhD qualification. So, so uh, and of course, you know, you still need to get 160 points, which is the current, uh, uh, the current uh, pass mark for uh, uh, being picked uh, for the uh, uh, skilled migrant category visa. Uh, so yeah, that's that's what it is uh, required uh, to be uh, done. So is Either you need to have a job or you need to have an offer of a job, a genuine offer of a job in New Zealand, or you should have studied here in uh, New Zealand for at least two years and uh, got a master's or a PhD qualification. So from that perspective, yes, it will be a lot easier for somebody uh, who's done a two years master's to be able to 
uh, tick off that particular box and say, yeah, hey, look, I, I passed one of the most uh, important criteria. But then, like I said, you will also require to have uh, the 160 points, which will be a combination of your age, your uh, previous qualifications, your work experience, if you're married, your uh, spouse qualification and so on and so forth. So so that's the way it is. But having a two years master's is certainly, certainly an advantage. To me. And if you're an AGV client, uh, speak to your AGV advisor uh, and we will be happy to provide more information for you. Soon. But hey, look, uh, thanks, buddy, for choosing AGV because uh, like all smart young people, you have many choices in your life and uh, uh, you chose to work with somebody like AGV for that we are uh, grateful for your uh, patronage of our services and uh, we will stand by you while you are still outside New Zealand and after you reach New Zealand as well. Uh, Team AJ, we will continue to support you. All right, cool. <clears throat> There is a question from Abhinav Mishra. He says, uh, hi, I am AJV. I think he means to say he's an AJV student. He's written a GV student, uh, close enough, I guess, uh, and says, I have applied for student partner visitor visa eight months back. Uh, still my file not allocated. Uh, now my partner has work visa. Uh, please suggest me if I withdraw and file partner work visa uh, from Hamilton. Okay. So I've been out, uh, if you have already applied for uh, the uh, uh, visitor visa, we will uh, check with the uh, immigration department whether we can have it changed uh, to a work visa uh, because now your uh, partner has completed uh, her course, I'm thinking. Uh, and uh, you have uh, now, uh, you're now basically eligible to apply for a work visa. So. What we will do is we will check with immigration to see if it is possible because your uh, application is already in the pro in process with uh, immigration New Zealand. So we will check to see if it is possible to to change the uh, application type from visitor visa to uh, work visa. Uh, and if they say yes, it is possible to uh, you know convert it from visitor visa to work visa then we will uh, have it changed but instead uh, if they say no it is not possible to change it from visitor visa to work visa then yeah it will make sense to withdraw the visitor visa application and apply for a work visa because uh, uh, obviously uh, you are now eligible for a work visa because your uh, partner has now got a work visa here in new zealand so my recommendation is that uh, I, I'm presuming that uh, your uh, visa file was uh, lodged either by Mary or by Tulika or Navia, who are all our uh, uh, licensed immigration advisors. So speak to whoever is the person who uh, is your licensed advisor within HMB and refer back to this conversation that you and I are having and let them know, let, you know, if it's Mary, let Mary know that. Uh, this is what Arun suggests, and I will also have a chat with her. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, if uh, you're eligible for a work visa, we will write to immigration and ask uh, if they can change it. Uh, uh, and from visitor visa to work visa, I don't think there is a lot of difference between uh, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the fee for visitor visa to work visa. So yeah. <clears throat> So my colleague Tulika confirms that uh, uh, that we can actually uh, convert uh, and pay the additional fee. Tulika is an ex-immigration officer and also a licensed immigration advisor. So yeah, we will do that and uh, request immigration New Zealand. So also, you know, because you've already been in the system for eight long months, you will not lose the the prioritization and the queue and stuff like that. So I think that's what we will do. So. Get in touch with Mary if she has been your advisor and tell her, hey, look, can you change my uh, 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 application from visitor visa to work visa and we will take it forward from there. All right, Abhinav, thank you so much. And yeah, sorry about the delay. It's, uh, it, it, it's been a while uh, since you've been, uh, uh, yeah, since you've applied and you're probably looking for an outcome, but you know, hey guys, uh, uh, these are all government uh, procedures, uh, 
uh, taken care of by individual bureaucrats and sometimes we can't push them uh, beyond a particular point and somebody in our own team has been waiting for more than 12 months for allocation of uh, the file uh, of uh, you know a particular visa and so yeah it's a little unfortunate but uh, yeah sorry about the delay that's happening but uh, yeah we will change it around and uh, change it from a uh, visitor visa to a work visa and there might be a small ch ch difference of fees that you might have to pay all right cool <clears throat> So there's a question from Nirosh. I think Nirosh has been coming online for pretty much the last few sessions that I have done. Uh, and it seems like Nirosh is having some problems uh, oh, about uh, the ANZ uh, opening the FTS account with uh, FTS standing for the funds transfer scheme uh, from ANZ. And uh, <clears throat> it looks like, uh, Nirosh has done everything from his side, uh, but it looks like ANZ has still not opened the uh, account. And uh, uh, and Nirosh's question is, can you elaborate what kind of uh, accounts we have in New Zealand? Interest-bearing accounts and non-interest-bearing accounts, what are they? What accounts we can use for day-to-day -day banking? as FTS is only for AIP, that is all fine. So yeah, Niraj, we have uh, different kinds of bank accounts here in New Zealand. Uh, so there will be interest, uh, I mean, by and large, most um, uh, savings accounts would be interest bearing. Uh, but then uh, within ANZ, I know there is one particular account called the Smart Saver account, which is also a savings account, but uh, they pay a higher interest uh, on it. Uh, as compared to just your regular savings account and uh, so yeah i can't remember all the names of these different accounts right now i have a few accounts with uh, anz myself and so also my family members we all bank with the uh, anz by the way so yeah but uh, like i said yeah there will be different kinds of uh, bank accounts uh, if you're looking at gaining uh, more interest then i would strongly recommend that you open once you reach here uh, you know there is no hurry you're still not um, in New Zealand. So once you come to New Zealand, uh, I'm not a banking expert, so I can only talk uh, as uh, just another guy who has got uh, an account with uh, ANZ, just like another any casual uh, uh, customer of ANZ. So what I would suggest is once you get here, uh, make an appointment uh, with your uh, local branch of uh, ANZ and go have a chat and say, hey, look, uh, I'm keen to set up uh, a savings account or discuss your particular requirements as to what exactly you want. And of course, the FTS account is from where you were. You will be drip fed uh, your living expenses. So yeah, that's what you can do. And uh, uh, that's what I would strongly recommend because as I, I reiterate, I'm not a banking expert, uh, but yeah, please uh, uh, go to the nearest branch of ANZ once you reach and I'm sure you'll get some expert advice from them. By the way, I'm going this week to uh, meet some senior managers of ANZ because we are planning to get into a closer working relationship with ANZ because AJV, as you guys know, is uh, growing stronger uh, day by day, week after week, month month by month. Uh, and uh, we want to ensure that we have a good, strong relationship with ANZ and kind of you know, streamline all these processes so that it becomes easier for our clients. All right, cool. Thanks, Virosh. All right. <clears throat> so the next question is from somebody called Land for Sale. <laughs> Good name. It's sometimes funny the kind of uh, uh, names people have online, you know, Land for Sale. <laughs> That's pretty fantastic, for, especially if you're a real estate agent, I guess. So, yeah, anyhow. <laughs> Sir, AJVN, hi, Land for Sale. Good to know, meet another AJVN. Hope you'll give me some uh, real estate advice at some point. Uh, Miss this intake for graduate diploma in mechanical engineering due to loan delay. What all courses can I do in India before arriving in New Zealand? Like I'm thinking of forklift, 
CNC courses, any suggestions, and a mechanical engineer. Hi, hey, look, it's a, a very good uh, background you have. And uh, I'm sorry you missed your uh, intake uh, because of the delay in the loan, but hey, you know, sometimes uh, uh, these things are all uh, blessings in disguise. So yeah, it's, uh, it's probably uh, a good thing that, you know, you've got to do your uh, loan processing the right way and then uh, come in here uh, at the right time with the right uh, uh, amount of loan that you require. So what I would recommend uh, to you uh, before you come to New Zealand, I think what you're planning to do is good. Uh, I'm not so sure about forklift because uh, it may not be that uh, useful, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Doing a CNC course would be uh, fantastic. Um, you know, and doing a CAD CAM kind of a course would be fantastic because you're uh, a mechanical uh, engineer background. So I'd say, yeah, I'd say it's a great idea to do uh, CNC uh, and CAD CAM and those kinds of uh, uh, courses uh, because they will certainly, certainly uh, add to your ability to be able to show more facets to your mechanical engineering side of things and uh, hopefully make you more employable. So yeah, all the best. Uh, thanks for choosing to work with AJB. Uh, now is the time I can reach out for uh, my little board of, uh, <clears throat> but um, I'd say yeah, it's a very good idea to uh, shore up yourself with some knowledge of other courses like CNC and CAD CAM, you know, which is all uh, going to add to your already uh, good background as a mechanical engineer. So that would be my suggestion to you, all right? So, and for those of you who want to get in touch with uh, us at HOA, that's how you get in touch with us. You can call us on um, these toll-free numbers that we set up in India and New Zealand, uh, and also those email addresses. Uh, we are planning to streamline those email addresses and make it a bit more simple so that uh, uh, each uh, time zone can reach out to the clear uh, nearest office. So my recommendation to all of you who are trying to get in touch with uh, AJV is uh, reach out to the office closest to you, which is uh, in your time zone so that you can get uh, immediate information and immediate responses to your queries. All right, cool. <clears throat> Vidushi saying asks me, uh, does masters in psychology have scope in New Zealand? And how much total points will be required for PR in psychology field uh, for New Zealand? Okay, so Vidushi, uh, the masters in psychology is certainly a very good choice because to the best of my knowledge, and uh, I shall, uh, hang on, I'm also going to, Quickly check, I've been just going on and on without checking to see what my uh, team has been posting for me because they tend to give some background information uh, as well. Okay. Nothing, uh, there was some update about Nerosh, which I already answered. Uh, Sunil Kumar it's about doing two years masters. I have already answered. Uh, Tulika gave me some feedback about converting the visitor visa to work visa. So that has been answered. Uh, and uh, my colleague Mubaraka has also posted something about another client. I will come back to that a little later. But right now at this point, there's nothing else I seem to be doing all right at this stage. Right. So Vidushi, coming back to your query, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, doing a, a course in psychology, psychology rather, uh, would be a fantastic thing to do because uh, I do believe we have a shortage of uh, psychologists in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, and uh, so what I'm going to do is quickly check to see if psychology. Yeah. So in our uh, long-term skill shortage list, uh, we have a requirement for, of uh, clinical psychologists. Uh, so it is there in our uh, health and social services uh, vertical. And uh, we are looking for people who can be clinical psychologists uh, here in New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it is uh, definitely mentioned in the long-term skill shortage list, which means that uh, 
there is a reasonable amount of demand for psychologists but again you know it's it's it specifically says clinical psychologists but having said that there is always a demand because as a a, a true welfare state uh, here in new zealand uh, so you know welfare states are the ones who could take good care of the health and well-being of their citizens so psychology of course plays a very key role in the health and well-being of any nation and especially in a country like new zealand where we put so much emphasis on the well-being of our society uh yeah psychologists would uh, uh, you know yeah coming to do a masters and psychology would be a great idea for you uh and how much total points will be required for pr and so, so whether you do a psychology or anything else uh, with this you will need to get uh, up to 160 points which is the selection uh, uh criteria at the moment uh to be able to apply for you know not pr because all of you most of you tend to call it pr right away uh getting to pr is actually a two stage process you first get into uh something getting you get something called a resident visa or an rv and then once you have that resident visa and you fulfill certain conditions for about you know couple of years then you get something called the pr so the difference between the residents visa and the uh, uh permanent resident uh, visa is that when you have resident visa you will have restrictions on you know traveling in and out of new zealand and stuff like that but once you get your permanent residency you could potentially travel outside new zealand for as long as you like and uh, then come back and you will be allowed entry back into new zealand so that's the difference between the resident visa and permanent resident visa so in fact when i got my resident visa here in new zealand in 2001 uh so i waited 2 years till i got my permanent residence and then i went back to india and set up a company to promote new zealand as a destination and i lived in india for uh you know uh, quite a few many years uh, before i decided i'm going to come back to new zealand so that's that's really the difference between a resident visa and a permanent resident visa so you'll need to get up to 160 points well uh, will you get this 160 points we will uh, our team will get in touch with you and uh one of our licensed advisors will do an analysis to see how many points you're going to get and uh, uh what's going to happen once you do your course in New Zealand and uh, get a job but hey look if you're a psychologist we work you here in New Zealand so please do come over cuz uh, uh we have this uh, published list called the skill shortage list and we are desperately trying to attract people into these particular uh, fields and into these occupations all right thank you very much <clears throat> okay so there is a next question from somebody called Cecil Christie and she's uh Cecil I think it's of him uh Cecil writes my daughter is in uh Christchurch studying in devotional therapy she has got job uh, 20 to 23 dollars per hour what about pr please get again you know there uh, like i said pr comes later so i think you're essentially uh, asking me about what kind of chances she has got uh, for a resident visa so sesal what we would like to do is uh, please ask your daughter uh, to give a call to our office here in new zealand so we have set up a a toll free number here in new zealand which is uh 0800 696977 or as we say here in new zealand 0800 696977 uh, ask your daughter to give a call to this number and speak to our licensed advisor mary uh and mary will do an analysis to see what is the job she has because it's not just getting the 20 to 23 dollars per hour but we also need to understand if it is uh uh the uh position that she is in uh is uh, recognized as the right level uh and uh, whether it is related to the course she has completed and so on and so forth so it does require a little bit of uh, uh analysis by a professional uh licensed immigration advisor so ask your daughter to give a call on 0800696977 and speak to mary and yeah well done we'll do a free assessment and let her know if she's eligible we will tell her how much it's going to cost her if she wants to use our services and i strongly encourage people who are trying to apply for visas to take the help of a professional uh, advisor a licensed advisor because it's a life changing moment guys and girls you know you don't want to 
mess it up to save a couple of thousand dollars. So, you know, you might as well. I took uh, professional help when I was uh, applying for my resident visa back in 2001. I, I didn't uh, uh, foresee I was going to be a licensed uh, immigration advisor myself. But I remember even back then in 2001, I took the professional services of an advisor. Uh, I paid, uh, you know, good money to this person to ensure that my wife and I, we got her residence in place. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it cost us uh, quite a bit, but it was uh, hassle-free, it was tension-free and stress-free. And that advisor took care of all the, uh, you know, uh, correspondence and communication with Immigration New Zealand. And uh, yeah, it was quite hassle-free. Yeah, sure, it, it did cost us money, but uh, that's what you've got to pay for professional services. All right, so Cecil, please ask your daughter to give us a call and we will assess. And, with, and let her know whether she's qualifying or not. And if she's qualifying and if she wants to use our services, Mary can also advise her how much it's going to cost. All right. Cool. Thank you. Right. Koshi Kuti says, how's the scope for accounting? Pretty good, Koshi. Uh, you know, uh, every society, uh, there are certain uh, basic uh, professions uh, which cannot be wished away, uh, even if people want to. Uh, wish them away, they can't because there's certain uh, professions uh, which uh, absolutely are required uh, uh, in any society. And so one of them is accounting, of course. And uh, as I say, you also require priests and undertakers and lawyers uh, and accountants would uh, absolutely fall into that uh, list of uh, skilled uh, uh, category of people uh, who are required uh, for any society or economy. The scope is pretty good. Uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, go to YouTube and search for Arun Jacob. Uh, and there should be, I'm, I'm certain there should be uh, a video I have made at some point or the other talking about uh, the scope for accountants uh, in New Zealand. But uh, yeah, the, the scope, as I said, is always pretty good. And while we are talking, let me see if I can uh, quickly come out with the uh, some information for you uh, because you know uh, we here at uh, AJV we like to give the most authentic information and let me see what comes out here when I s right so if you are going to do uh, a course and so for accountants right now the job opportunities are good uh, and uh, it says uh, that uh, chances of getting a job as an accountant are good due to demand for experienced workers. And it says that uh, accountants usually earn $55,000 to $90,000 per year. Uh, and the source is from uh, Chartered Accountants of Australia and New Zealand and Hayes Salary Guide 2018. Uh, and uh, yeah, and accountants uh, without uh, CA, CPA qualifications usually earn fifty-five to ninety thousand dollars per annum, and uh, accountants with CA, CPA normally earn between uh, seventy-six to two hundred and two thousand uh, uh, dollars uh, per annum, which is fantastic. That's a lot of money in a country like New Zealand. So yeah, that's what it says, and it also says the job opportunities are good. Uh, at this moment, and what are the other jobs you can do in this field? Is that you could be an auditor, uh, and again, for auditors, the job opportunities are good, or you could become an accounts officer. And the official careers website says that uh, job opportunities for uh, accounts officers are average uh, at this point, but uh, the job opportunities for auditor and for accountant is very good, especially if you have a CA or a CPA kind of a background. So yeah, I mean, and I do remember uh, some of our uh, clients who came to New Zealand uh, to do a Master of Professional Accounting course uh, here in New Zealand have found uh, good uh, opportunities. I can think of uh, one of our students called Carol Pereira who came and studied and did a professional accounting course from the University of Waikato. <coughs> University of Waikato, which is not too far away from here. So yeah, she so yeah, she and she's still in touch, and we kind of uh, uh, know what's happening with her and her career. She found a job and she's moved on. And but quite a few of our accounting students are doing well. So thanks for sharing your number, uh, Koshi. And uh, when the AJV team gets in touch with you, please have a chat, get some information, and then 
decide whether you want to uh, come in and uh, uh, attempt the study plus settle pathway. All right. <coughs> <coughs> Oh, the culprit for my coughing is my smoking over the weekend. I'm not a big smoker, but I do smoke a cigarette once in a while. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to check to see if I have missed any questions from my team. Uh, uh, Mubaraka has asked me to... Oh. Uh, answer a question from Srikant Krishnamurti. And Srikant writes, uh, good day, AGV team. I would like to dedicate uh, a couple of hashtags today after having wonderful experience working with you, with your team so far uh, with plethora of information suggestions. And uh, the hashtags are hashtag ask AJV and <laughs> uh, hashtag ask Arun and uh, Hashtag uh, AJV rocks and <laughs> hey Srikant, I appreciate that, mate. You know, it's so cool when you guys come to the party and uh, you get involved with the kind of work that we are doing, and we absolutely love what we're doing. And uh, uh, just the other day, I was having a chat with some of my senior uh, uh, colleagues, and uh, I was like saying that you know, perhaps the best thing that we have created in uh, AJV is uh, happiness, and and I don't uh, want to sound boastful about it, but I think we are a very a uh, happy company and we just back each other. We just have loads of fun. And uh, I think we all wake up to come and have a great day and do the best we can for all you young people who are uh, depending on us for a uh, life-changing decision like going overseas. And which is the reason we work very uh, sincerely because, you know, uh, I say this very openly in all my live sessions. For us, your future is more important than our profits uh, because, yes, we are a business. We need to earn money, we all, uh, you know, me, uh, myself and my team, we all need to get our salaries to take care of our families and so on and so forth. But I promise you, we will not do it at the expense of uh, your futures or by giving you bad advice or bad information. Uh, and which is why, you know, no. Thank you so much, uh, Srikant. And uh, Mubarka also gives me um, uh, feedback that uh, you already have your offer of place from University of Canterbury and EIT and Welltech, and you're also looking for an offer from uh, SIT. All of them are very good institutions. Uh, uh, go through the, uh, you know, the papers in each one of these courses and uh, see what jumps out at you and what kind of uh, grabs you when you read uh, these uh, different, uh, uh, you know, courses. And yeah, that should uh, get you to what you're doing. But hey, look, thank you so much for those uh, Lovely hashtags. I especially like the uh, hashtag AJV rocks. That's cool. <laughs> Radio. So there's a question from Son Guin Huang. Uh, I'm thinking Son Guin is Vietnamese. Uh, sounds very Vietnamese, the number. Uh, and he writes, hello, sir, I've been, uh, uh, I don't know if it's a he or a her, uh, sorry if I'm uh, getting the wrong gender, uh, but the question is, hello, sir, I've been in New Zealand for one year. I have three more years of university study here uh, in BCom Information Science. Uh, is there any chance which I can obtain permanent residence? Okay, so Son, uh, the uh, trick is, you know, as I just uh, mentioned earlier in my, uh, uh, live session, uh, you will have to complete your course and find yourself a job that is relevant to the course that you have completed. Uh, and not only should it be relevant, but it should also be at the right level uh, as per something called ANSCO, which is Australia and New Zealand standard classification of occupations. Uh, and uh, it's like a, you know, a government register which sort of classifies all the different uh, occupations and of course we also need to get the right amount of salary so you are a few years away because you're still a bachelor student so i would say focus on your bachelor's at the moment get done with it and uh, when you're in your last year give us a call again two three years from now uh, we are present in new zealand and you can call us on this number uh, or you can you know just connect with us on uh, Facebook or, or on YouTube, we are present in all these particular places and also on Instagram. 
uh, yeah, uh, you still have two, three years more to go. So it's a little early to be looking at the residence already because you first need to successfully complete your course. So yeah, I finish that and then come back to us and we will certainly, certainly be able to catch. All right, cool. <clears throat> Going back to Skype to see if my team has got anything else for me to answer. Uh, so Neha asked me, has posted a question from uh, Jazz Kumar and says, uh, and, and the question is, hi, um, uh, sir, tell me graduate diploma in community healthcare and support level seven is beneficial for study in New Zealand. And uh, there are some comments from Neha, my colleague, a fantastic advisor. She is uh, this young lady, uh, Neha Salian. Uh, and she's uh, given some comments saying that you already have a Bachelor of Nursing uh, 2018 and that your IELTS is pretty good uh, and you have some, uh, you know, a, a few months of work experience. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, if your answer a uh, question, uh, Jazz, is uh, whether it's a good idea to do a community healthcare and uh, support level seven uh, in New Zealand. I think it is because uh, uh, a lot of our students uh, who are coming for this course, and I hope you're uh, coming to New Zealand uh, as an AJV student as well, because it's important you get the right support once you come here into New Zealand. But uh, yeah, it's like a um, good course to do because we are having a reasonably big shortage at the moment of uh, uh, skilled workers, especially in the uh, aged care sector, because uh, you know, in New Zealand, as a country, a lot of our population is getting older, and uh, a lot of them go to rest homes and old age homes, and so we require a lot of help in this particular area. So there has been a pretty good growth in this particular industry, and there is a shortage of uh, people. And because you already have some background as a nurse, and then uh, done something in physiotherapy, and now you know you're considering to come for a level seven and uh, uh, healthcare, yeah, I think it would be definitely be beneficial. All right, cool. <clears throat> and like I said, you know, it's very important you come to New Zealand as an AJV student. If you're not coming to New Zealand as an AJV student, I promise you, you will regret it after you land here. Uh, once you see the kind of support we provide to our students, and you know, that's when you'll say, "Oh, I did a mistake. Uh, I should have uh, gone to uh, you know New Zealand uh, uh, through AJV." But so you still have the chance. Don't don't lose the opportunity to work with a company that will give you free and unlimited advice to ensure that you guys get to the you know desired destination that you want to go to. All right, cool. Okay, okay, next one, Vinayak Nilajkar. Hello, sir, and this is posted by Madhvi, my colleague. Madhvi is another fantastic colleague of mine. <clears throat> So Vinayak says, hello, sir, I'm an AJV student. Hello, Vinayak, always a pleasure to say hello to our AJV student. And uh, he writes, I missed out the FAB intake for Wintech due to delay in getting the loan approval letter. Now can I use the same letter again for July intake? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't see any reason why uh, uh, you can't use the same loan letter, uh, Vinayak. And if required, maybe you just have to get a small change done in it. But uh, what uh, uh, Madhvi uh, gives me as feedback in your case is that your visa was filed on the 27th of January uh, and uh, that on the 17th of February, uh, which is today, uh, she spoke to Wintec uh, and they said they can give an extension uh, to your uh, you know place in their school uh, once you receive your approval in principle. But overall, I don't think uh, there is much of a problem, Vinayak, uh, with uh, you know using the same loan uh, approval as long as it's a genuine loan approval, and you know we, it's only a question of uh, uh, managing the dates uh, from uh, this intake to the next intake. I don't think it's such a big uh, issue. So I I personally think that we can uh, sort it out for you. So continue to stay in touch with Madhvi, and uh, we will deal with it uh, one step at a time. All right, and my. Colleague Ruben, uh, another fantastic advisor. He also gives some uh, feedback and comments uh, about Vidushi Singh's uh, uh, earlier comment about psychologists. And uh, well, Ruben brings out the very valid point that uh, psychologists require registration here in New Zealand, which I think I forgot to mention. Yeah, absolutely. Psychologists would require registration 
in New Zealand, there are certain professions like psychologists and doctors and teachers and lawyers and architects and so on and so forth, uh, which require registration in New Zealand and psychologists is one of them. Uh, yeah, sure. And, uh, you know, Ruben also gives additional information stating uh, she would want to specify what uh, major she would like to take. Uh, uh, there is uh, a postgraduate diploma at Waikato uh, University, uh, which leads to registration. It's a two year course. Uh, this is on the uh, long term skill shortage list. So, Midushi, if you're still there, if you're still following this live session, that sounds like fantastic advice to me. Uh, from my colleague uh, Ruben, yeah, because he says it's a, a two-year postgraduate diploma, but it will uh, give you the registration that you require to practice as a psychologist in New Zealand. And the good thing uh, is that this course is on the long-term skill shortage list as well. So yeah, fantastic uh, uh, research and feedback, uh, uh, Ruben. Appreciate that as always. Uh, you're pretty onto it in each and every live session that all of us do. Uh, but uh, Vidushi, if you're still listening, I think you know that's the kind of uh, course you might want to contemplate doing here in New Zealand. All right, cool. <clears throat> Nimesh Dasanayake says, hi. Hi, Dimesh. Hi, Bhavan. All right. Nimesh says, hi, Arun. You guys are going doing going a great job. There will, will, there, will there be a policy change in this April 2020 in New Zealand? I don't know, Nimesh. I'm not the uh, uh, Minister of Immigration of new zealand uh nor do, nor do i uh nor am i part of uh you know jacinda Ardern's cabinet so i would have no clue uh but you know uh, yeah immigration laws are dynamic and you know they will there will be certain changes but don't 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 stress too much about uh policy changes because at the end of the day every policy will only mean one thing is that is there's that we want to attract the best talent from around the world to come into new zealand and Whatever policy changes happen, it will, I can assure you that uh, it will be pro good talent, pro good people, and pro uh, competent people who can come and contribute to New Zealand. So don't stress about uh, uh, things which are beyond our control, which uh, you know government departments and ministers take. But as long as you have the right uh, skills, knowledge, and uh, you know uh, attitude, you'll be just fine. So not not to worry about it too much. All right, cool. <clears throat> Right, next question uh, is from Pakshal Shah, and he says, can one year master's in analytics be considered for PR? Yeah, but hey, look, uh, uh, any master's will give you uh, points towards qualification, whether it is uh, one year or two years. Of course, if you do a two years course and uh, uh, you are able to get uh, uh, up to 160 points, then of course it will uh, sort of uh, uh, put you straight away into the queue for uh, skilled migrant category uh resident visa application but uh, even if you're not getting the 160 points and you're ending up with a one-year uh course in something as beautiful as analytics because there is a pretty big requirement for uh, people in this particular subjects and areas right now in new zealand so i'm quite certain if you do a master's in analytics you will end up getting uh, a good uh, relevant job and also at the right level of uh, salary uh which means you will get to the 160 points and you'll be able to apply for your skill migrant category. Thanks for sharing your number, Paksha. Uh, uh, and uh, I think, uh, yeah, we will get in touch with you. But like I said, it's not getting, you know, your residency or your PR, as you guys keep calling it, is, uh, uh, it's not an easy journey. It's going to be tough and which is where you will require constant uh, and credible information at each and every step. And which is why we say, hey, look, come work with, AJV, because we are already five uh, licensed advisors in the company. I think we're going to have 10 by the end of this year, if not more. And we will continue to give you con you know, a constant and uh, ongoing uh, immigration advice, free of cost, uh, until such a time you reach the point where you want to apply for the residency. So that's a true advantage that people have when they choose to come to New Zealand uh, through AJV. And yeah, I think it's... Uh, working really well uh, so far i don't get any complaints uh, from uh, uh, my students or from my clients and you know we you guys know how transparent we are as an organization here's the guy who started the company sitting and talking to you week after week uh, uh, online uh, and you know in a live uh, situation and any anyone anybody in the anywhere in the world uh, can get onto this chat and ask me questions and if you're not happy give us that feedback 
we are uh, more than happy to receive bouquets and brick bags because you know we do we don't claim to be the best in the world uh, we would like to get to that point but uh, yeah at this point uh, i think we're doing a good job so yeah uh, that's the reason i think if you guys are planning to come to new zealand you must choose a company like hmv all right guys cool Look, okay, okay. Mahesh Madhavan asked me a question, but uh, did not share his number, so I'm gonna skip that and move on. Uh, okay, I already answered Jazz Kumar's. Uh, Deepta asked me a question, no number, but it's a simple question, so I will answer it. Deepta Vimala Sena. Uh, I Bhavan Deepta. Uh, says hi any age li limit apply for level nine parts now nah, there's no age limit you know please come study in new zealand we want your international fees so absolutely no problem with uh, how old you are i already answered vinayak and yunus afia asma asked me a question no number yunus i would have liked it if you gave your uh number but your question is uh what are the requirements for a master's program in New Zealand? Requirement one, you will need to get a good IELTS score, uh, 6.5 with no band score less than six uh, in any of the subsections. Uh, I will just uh, reconfirm and clarify that. Yes, you need require a 6.5 in IELTS uh, or equivalent in uh, PTE uh, with no band score lower than six. That is the main uh, requirement to be able to get into a master's course in New Zealand. Uh, and of course, you need to have the right academic background. Um, and if sometimes there is a requirement for uh, getting, um, you know, having some work experience, that's also. But get in touch with us. You haven't shared your number, unfortunately. Uh, and uh, get in touch with the, our team at uh, AGV. And it's very simple to get in touch with us. You just have to call one of this call one of these numbers or use one of these. Uh, Email addresses, get in touch, or better still, uh, just ping me on my inbox, uh, in my inbox on Facebook, leave your number, uh, and we will get back to you. All right, cool. <clears throat> I have a feeling I'm already done. Oh, I didn't even realize. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> That's my sign to say that I'm done with this today's session. and. Uh, ringing the bell to say yeah i'm done for today i'm just trying to see if uh, uh everything i missed nothing I, there's only one update from my colleague nisha who says that mahesh madhavan uh, uh who i think just asked a question somewhere uh mahesh madhavan so yeah uh, i think uh Mahesh Madhavan's, uh, uh, Mahesh, uh, there is confirmation from uh, Nisha that uh, you have given your uh, uh, course confirmation and that the team is going to initiate the process right away. Okay, cool, excellent. Right, uh, not too many questions here, uh, <clears throat> but I'm gonna quickly go through the last few. Pranav Brahmanian says, hi, AJB client here, working with the advisor Jagruti. I'm having a hard time decided between psychology, health science, or health management. Is there a way I can contact with alumni or students? Yeah, sure, you know, I don't see any reason why you can't do that for now. But you know, my own personal, in my own personal opinion, I would say, you know, health uh, science might be a better option uh, because it's a little wider. Health management, again, you need to be a bit more uh, senior and have some kind of management experience. Uh, and psychology will require the registration, of course. But uh, if you chose health science, you could potentially end up working in uh, the health sector. Like I said, a lot of requirements in the uh, aged care sector and those kinds of places. So I would recommend uh, health sciences over the other two. Uh, next one is from Pratiba Alawadi, who says, hello, Ron, I'm a client of AJV Pershing Level 9 course already in New Zealand. My husband also received dependent visa. My son is in class 11th in India will complete his 12th in India only. Okay, fantastic, Pratibha. Uh, happy to hear your husband got uh, uh, his visa and uh, hopefully you will be reunited soon. And yeah, I mean, no problem if you wanna wait for your child to uh, finish his uh, 12th in India. Yeah, good for 
good for you and good for him. But uh, why don't you get him over it? Because, you know, why do you want to deny your son uh, one year of his life while he's still growing up as a young student to uh, spend in New Zealand? That will be my sincere advice to you. Uh, Reno, Cl Reno Clitus says, hi, sir. For a fresh graduate BSc nurse from India, what is the best option for those kind of students who wish to study or work in New Zealand with no work experience? Of course, you will need to come here and uh, do a course that will either get you into your uh, registration for a nurse, Renu, or uh, do a course like in health science and you'd be able to get into uh, you know, the health sector, especially in the aged care, which has recently been listed into our you know, skill shortage uh, list. So that those are the two options. Uh, you haven't mentioned your contact number, Renu. We would love to uh, get in touch with you and uh, uh, work with you and see what is the best advice we can provide. So. Please share your number. Inbox me a number uh, on Facebook. Uh, just search for Arun Jacob and I'll pick it up and pass it on to one of my team members. Uh, Sohail Rana says, I need to go in New Zealand. Well, uh, uh, Sohail, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, you've shared your number. We will see if I can give you a call and we will examine to see if there are any possibilities or pathways available for you. Uh, Men, Jadila, please, I want to know more about Masters in Accounting and Finance and Masters in Auditing Programs. And, New Zealand, there is requirements specifically. Uh, specifically. Uh, hey man, I just answered uh, it quite elaborately about somebody else who asked me about accounting uh, and I explained what are all the different possibilities. So go back into this uh, live session and uh, you know, rewind it and listen to that. And there is a lot of information that I provided. It's also a, a sneaky way of making you watch this entire session one more time. But yeah, I did answer this question now. The requirements, of course, you know, if you're looking at a master's, you'll require a 6.5 in IELTS with no score bang, uh, with no band score less than six. So last one here, Mohammed Adnan Khan, I want to migrate to New Zealand. I'm a safety engineer. What's the process? Process is simple. Uh, Mohammed, you will need to send us your CV. Uh, send your CV to, uh, I'm not sure which part of the world you are in, but if you're in India, uh, yeah, just send the CV to that particular email address. And if you are uh, not in India, you just send the CV to that particular address. And if you're married, uh, I would also like you to uh, send your spouse CV because then we can do an assessment and check to see whether you qualify for residency. Cool. So that was it, people. Uh, fantastic session as always. Mondays are a little tough, uh, but you know my um, team has very cleverly thrust me into this position of having to kickstart uh, the weeks with my live sessions. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, team. You. Yeah, I thought all of you loved me, but yeah, you guys pushed me completely out of my weekend slumber and put me here in front of a live camera every Monday. But hey, look, jokes apart, I love my team and everybody else who joins this live sessions. Thank you for joining in. And till the next time, Kakete Ano from uh, New Zealand. Kakete Ano is see you later. And for Maria, which is good night. Take care. <clears throat>